This seminar, we're going to look at uh, something that we call Newton's method. We have learned in previous math courses how to solve lots of different types of equations. So, for instance, linear equations, we could solve that for x. We can solve quadratic equations because we have factoring and quadratic formula uh, to deal with those. But when it comes to equations of degree greater than 2, such as this one, 7x5 minus 3x4, so on, we don't have any way of solving that equation except for putting it in our graphing calculator, sketching the graph and getting the calculator to find the solutions. Or here's another example, 7x minus sine x equals 0. No algebraic way of doing that short of putting it into our graphing calculator and getting it to calculate the roots. So Newton's method is a, is a method that allows us to approximate the zeros of a function by using the equation of a tangent line. So this is another application of the derivative. It will allow us to approximate very closely uh, roots of very complicated functions. So I'm just going to take a look at this uh, diagram right here. So I've got, a, I've got a graph here, some function, let's call it uh, y equals f of x. It'll have some equation. And here this blue line is going to represent the actual sketch of its graph. And here's its solution right here. There's the x-intercept or the, the zero of the, the function. Let's say that I don't know what that answer is, but I know that there's an answer fairly close to it. I'm going to call it x1. So if I knew a value that was close to the real solution, okay, let's say that's called x1, then the point that is on the curve would be the point x1 comma f of x1, f of x1 being the y value of the function. I would be able to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at this point. And the equation of the tangent line, being this line right here, it would have an x-intercept that would be very easy to find because this is simply the equation of a line. And we could find this x-intercept of this line that we could call, say, x2. What do we know about x2 versus x1? So by substituting in x1, into the function, finding the equation of this tangent line and finding its x-intercept, we have found a new approximation to the root of our function. And x2 is closer to the real solution over here than what x1 was. Now if we simply repeated this process, if we used our new point x2 and found its y-value, and found the equation of the tangent line again to this curve, and once again found its x-intercept, that would give us an x-value of x3, this one right here, which will be closer again. And if we continue this process, we would get to x4, we would get to x5, and the tangent line eventually would approximate our root. That's what Newton's method is. It's just finding the equation of the tangent line, and then finding the x-intercept and continuing this process until our x-intercepts become the exact same value as the x-intercepts of our true function. So let's look at how this would look then in an actual e equation. So we know the equation of the tangent line is given by this formula. y minus y naught equals slope x minus x naught. Okay, so we are starting with the equation, this point right here. Oh, y. Equals the slope and x minus x1. So that was this point right here. We substituted the slope in. And the slope of the tangent line is f prime of x1. 
Okay, so all we've done is we have put in to find the equation of this one right here. This thing had a slope of f prime of x1, and the point that it went through was x1 f of x1. So substituting that into our, our point slope formula, that generates this equation right here. Now what we're wanting to do is we are wanting to find out where it crosses the x-axis. So this point right here, which is also a point on the line, is going to have some x value and its y value is going to be zero because it is the x-intercept on that line. So we know that if we're wanting to find the place where it crosses the x-axis, then the point will have a y value of zero. And we're going to call the next point x2, comma zero. So its equation will be y, which is zero, minus f of x1 equals f prime of x1 times its x value, which is x2, minus x1. So this will be the equation of this line, this tangent line, with the new value x2, comma zero, this point right here substituted in for it. What we're going to do now is we want to find out, well, we can tidy this up a little bit here, I guess. We don't need that zero in there. What we want to do is we want to find out what is x2. What is our new approximation? So what we'll do is we will divide both sides by f prime of x1. Let's do this first. So negative f of x1 divided by f prime of x1 equals x2 minus x1. And then what we will do is we'll add x1 to both sides. I think this is as simple as we can make this. And so we now have a formula that will find for us x2, which is our better approximation for the root of the true function. And this is what Newton's method is. It says if you want to find an approximation for the root of your function that is better than the one that you selected, then the second approximation or the closer approximation will equal x1, the first one that you selected, minus the y value, f of x1, divided by the derivative at that point. And where did this formula come from? Came way back to here, the equation of the tangent line. So all this is is the equation of the tangent line of this curve right here with the point x2 comma 0 substituted in for it. And so you don't need to go through and derive this all the time. This is his formula for approximating the roots of the function. And then similarly, if you wanted to get uh, x3 or an even closer solution, well, you would take your answer that you got here and substitute it into this formula. And similarly, you want to get closer yet, you would do x, x4 equals x3 minus f of x3 divided by f prime of x3. So let's look at how we would solve some of these questions uh, using a real example. Use Newton's method to approximate the solution of x cubed minus x minus 1 equals 0. So here's a cubic one. We're not going to be solving this. We don't have a cubic e equation. There's a quadratic formula for, for solving it. We don't have a formula for solving cubics. So you could stick that in your calculator and figure it out, but um, we're going to find the, uh, the value, approximate the value of the solution using Newton's method. And if you substitute in 1.5 in for x, you get a solution that's fairly close to 0. It's not, it's not 0, but it's close to 0. So we're going to start with that as our approximation. So x1 is equal to 1.5. So using Newton's method, then a closer solution would be x, x2 equals x1, which is 1.5, minus f of x1. Well, we need to get the y value here. So we need to take 1.5 and, and substitute it into our function. So substituting that into the calculator, I get a y value of 0 0.875 divided by, now I need to have the derivative evaluated at x1. 
So I need the derivative of this function. Well, f prime of x is going to equal 3x squared minus 1 when I take the derivative. So there's the derivative of the function. And what would be f prime of 1.5? Again, I need the calculator back. 3 times 1.5 power of 2 minus 1. 5.75. So this gives me a, whoops, it's 2 still here. This is going to give me a better approximation. So 1.5 minus 0 0.875 divided by 5.75. Oops, what was that? 1.348. So it's saying the a better estimate of the zero of this function is 1.348. That's closer to its true value than 1.5. If you wanted to get an even closer yet value, we would repeat this whole procedure. Now, yeah, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, wow, this is a lot of calculating. I've got I to gotta put this in here. Then I've got to get f of that. So this, this value here has got to go back up here into this function and figure out the y value. Then I've got to take the derivative. I guess I've got the derivative already, but I've got to stick those numbers in there. That's a lot of calculation. Well, here's what the calculator can do for us so that we don't have to keep repeating all of these x3, x4, x5, until we get our accurate answer. The calculator can do this for us. There's a button called ANS. It is sitting where? Right, whoops, it's going to disappear, but it's right right here, right above the minus, minus button. So what that does is it takes the answer that you previously had and puts it in there. So what we can do is we can say, well, what we want is we want to take this answer and put it in here, and this answer and put it in here, and this answer and, and put it in here. So what we can do is we can say equals answer minus the function of the answer. So this, I mean, this takes a little bit of work too. So this would be answer cubed. That's going into this function right up here. Minus answer minus 1, because that's the function, divided by f prime of x2. So f prime of x is this function right here. So that's 3 times oops, answer squared minus 1. And then when we hit enter, this will calculate for us x3. And then if you simply hit enter again, you get x4. Enter, enter, enter until things do not change. And let's so let's work this out. So I've got I've got the answer there, so I'm going to go answer minus bracket answer to the power of 3 minus answer minus 1 close bracket divided by bracket this here which is 3 times answer to the power of 2 minus 1. Close the bracket and hit enter. So now it has calculated it has calculated for me x3 and it's saying x3 is 1.325. So we're getting closer again. We've gone from here to here. Now if we want x4, enter. 1.325 you can see things aren't aren't changing to three decimal places. We're at now 1.325. And if I hit enter again, there we go. Now that answer is accurate to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's an answer that's accurate to, what was it, nine decimal places? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 or 9 there. Anyway, I guess there's nine numbers. Accurate to nine decimal places. Okay, so that's... You do have to do it once, so you you put in your 1.5, work that out, and um, 
then you can just hit equals, 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 and it'll continue to calculate those values. And what you're actually doing when you do that is you are getting these x values as they get closer and closer to your solution. So looking at example two here, we have cosine x equals x, and we're going to approximate this for x1 equals 0 0.7. Well, the first problem with this equation, it needs to equal zero. So I'm just going to bring the x over because Newton's methods will find roots, places where the function equals zero. So according to Newton's method, a second approximation, one that's better than this one, x2 will equal x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. So we, we need to find, first of all, a function for the... Uh, derivative, so f prime of x, this function would be negative sine x, derivative of cosine is negative sine, minus 1 would be f prime of, of x. And now what we will do is we will bring up the calculator. And the easiest thing to do here is to just punch in 0 0.7 and hit enter. And then x2 equals x1, so this will equal answer minus bracket f of x1. Well, here's f of x right here. So this would be cosine of answer, close bracket minus answer, close bracket. So that was f of x1 divided by bracket f prime of x1, which is this function over here. So negative sine of that answer minus 1, close bracket. And we get we get, okay, come back here. There we go. We get an x2 that is 0 0.7394. 0 0.7394. So we're a little bit closer. And to find x4, sorry, x3, we will simply hit enter. And x4 and x5, and you can see that we're now accurate to nine decimal places. So if we're going to go to four decimal accuracy here, then 0.7391 would be our approximate. So x is approximately equal to 0.7391 four decimal places. So that's how Newton's method will allow us to approximate roots of functions. And really, all we're doing is we are finding the equation of the tangent line, and once we have that equation, we're finding its x-intercept. That would be x2. And then we're doing that again, x3. Doing it again, x4. And so every time we hit enter on the calculator, once we put the answer function in, it is moving us to x2, and then enter again puts us at x3. And we keep hitting enter until our roots are accurate to, the calculator goes to nine decimal places, so accurate to nine decimal places for that solution.